Hey everyone, it's Patty from Do Space Sparkle. Now, if you have a box like this in your art room, maybe from a shipment of art supplies, then you have the makings of a perfect splatter box. Okay, I'm going to take you through the process of making a very simple splatter box, how to make the perfect splatter paint, all because I know what's coming up for you guys. Winter is coming and that means you're going to be creating art projects that need a lot of snow. So here's what you're going to need. Basically a big old box, something that can hold a 12 by 18 sheet of paper. Then you're going to need a box cutter that only you will be using and some masking tape. That's it. Now I also created this little handout just in case you feel like you need the step by step. I got it right here and you can get this by clicking in the link below in the description. You want to grab a box and tape the bottom part of it up. It should be already taped and the top part is what you're going to manipulate. Now I like to put it on its side, the side that you would like to position the box eventually when it's done. And the only cutting that you're going to need to do, and I recommend using a box cutter, is to remove the top flap. So I'm just going to move this around and just take the box cutter and very carefully just remove this. Now, don't throw this away. I do so many projects with cardboard that I keep a box of this in my art room or in my office here to use for future use. Okay, so now what you have is a box with an opening. Now that opening might seem a little bit strange, but stay with me. Now you're going to need the masking tape and you're going to uh, tape the flap to the bottom flap so it's nice and secure. I have four pieces of masking tape and all you want to do is just secure two pieces here and on the other side. This is what it's going to look like when you're finished. So the idea is that when students have a piece of art, they can slide the art in here and stand right at the edge of a desk so that they can have their head right here overlooking and not have to peek in underneath. So this is where the splatter will happen. So now you have the splatter box all prepared. Now you need the splatter paint. So I like to use liquid white tempera paint and I'm going to screw off the cap and I'm going to show you the perfect consistency because too thick and it's not going to work. And when most liquid tempera paint comes out of the container, it's pretty thick. Now that's not going to make very good snow. So you want to add a certain amount of water. Add a small amount at first and then stir it around until it's all mixed up together. You might not get it right the first time and that's okay. You can either add a little bit more water or you can add a little bit more of the white paint. Okay, so this is almost perfect. I kind of got it right on the first time. I want it to be able to dribble, but I don't want a steady stream. That means it's too loose. And if it doesn't dribble at all, it means it's too thick. So this is pretty good. Now, there are three different types of paintbrushes you can use. You can use a paintbrush that is thick like this one. You can also use a paintbrush that is kind of floppy like this one. And then you can also use a toothbrush. Now I know that if you ask any mother of your students to bring in an old toothbrush, they'll have plenty. So this is a good way to get uh, use of those old toothbrushes. I'm going to show you all three. So let's get splattering. My suggestion is that you create two or three of these for the back of your classroom and have them permanently set up. So you want to have the opening so that the children can stand right here. You're going to put your artwork inside and then you want to put the paintbrushes and the paint inside the box. There's three different types of bladders. I like to teach children to hold their finger about two or three inches, hover over the artwork, and then just tap, tap, tap. Now you can see why already the benefit of the splatter box, because the splatters are going everywhere. So that is the floppy brush. Now the way I use the big uh, thick brush is I actually um, flick the paint by directing it in a splatter motion. And this is very similar to what I would use the toothbrush for. So the hardest part about the toothbrush is getting the paint on the actual toothbrush. Once you do, 
hold it over the artwork and then splatter. This creates a super fine uh, spray of paint, whereas the smaller brush creates more of a blobby snow. But isn't that fun? Look, better watch your kids because they can be back here all day long and they might splatter so much that they cover the entire snowman. This is so much fun to do. In fact, I'm kind of getting into it right now. So that's it. So one last thing, might I suggest putting a, a little container of baby wipes so that when children are back there, the only thing that really gets messy are their fingers. So have the baby wipes there for the kids to wipe their hands off. Now, if you love this video, go ahead and share it with all your art teacher friends and make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we put out a brand new video to help you in the art room. Now, I can't wait to see how your splatter box turns out, so make sure you join the Deep Space Sparkle Dazzler group, and I will see you there.